So we're looking at an anterior view here of a left thigh and hip region. And if we come and look at the, the more proximal aspect here with the hip, we can see here we have psoas major. Now it's attaching proximally here to the lumbar vertebrae. So that psoas major, the more medial of the two hip flexor muscles, the more lateral one, iliacus sitting the muscle belly sitting here in the iliac fossa you can see the iliac crest here this is the fossa just inferior to that so that's iliacus so psoas major iliacus now this next bit you don't need to know for this subject but this is the inguinal ligament and distal to the inguinal ligament these two muscles are considered to have fused and become one structure that's called iliopsoas. So in this session we can only pin them up here where we have psoas major and iliacus because iliopsoas is not on your list but just so you know this is considered to be uh, the combination of iliacus and psoas major here distal to the inguinal ligament that's called iliopsoas. So I can't pin that one this session but you do need to know psoas major and iliacus. Now not on this model is psoas minor. Now if psoas minor were on this model it would just be a long skinny tendon about here where the pointer is and it's just it just sits on the anterior surface of psoas major here. Now the muscle belly couldn't be seen on this model even if it were present because it attaches uh, more proximally or more superiorly on the vertebral column than psoas major does. So it's way up in the superior lumbar and inferior thoracic region. So this is major. If there was a tendon, and if you find a, a tendon on a specimen, a skinny tendon running along here, that would be psoas minor. Now on the, the anterior aspect here, we have a couple of muscles attaching to the ASIS. Uh, firstly, we have the tensor fascia latte out here heading towards the lateral side. And then we have the sartorius being more heading towards the medial aspect here as it travels distally. Now the tensor fascia latte or TFL, we can see it attaching from here on the ilium down into the iliotibial band or tract that you can see here. So that's the tensor fascia latte there. It's fairly small. Whereas the sartorius, on the medial aspect here, travels all the way down to the proximal tibia. So the longest muscle in the body, it's very slender and strap-like and it certainly will be on the specimens, um, quite slender, but very long. And then on the posterior aspect, the hip region, we have the gluteal muscles. Now firstly, most superficially, and the largest, we have gluteus maximus. Now notice that the fibres are not directly horizontal, but they're also not uh, vertical, so they're mostly oblique here running across from the uh, hip and sacrum across to the gluteal tuberosity, but also attaching in to the iliotibial band or tract along with the TFL, tensor fascia latte. So both of those combined are in a position to help abduct the lower limb. But notice that superior to the maximus, even if we leave maximus in place, notice that superior to it, you can see this other gluteal muscle, which is gluteus medius. And you can see that it comes right up, almost to the top of the iliac crest there. So if we then remove gluteus maximus, we can see more of medius here. And note too that medius is actually under this connective tissue here. So on the model they've put this connective tissue here and, and it may be uh, uh, present on specimens as well, but this is still gluteus medius under it. Okay, So medius is a large muscle, a large fan-shaped muscle similar to the deltoid which you can see here. Now gluteus minimus is deep to medius, so it's under medius, but the way you can tell that this is medius is because it's attaching right up here very close to the, to the iliac crest there. 
if we had a muscle here that was the same shape but it ended about here and there was a fair bit of bone we could see here then we'd know we were looking at gluteus minimus so it's the same shape but it's just shorter than medius so it sits directly under medius directly deep to it but doesn't come as far superiorly as medius does and we do have a specimen where you can see minimus so bear that in mind if you can see an expanse of bone up here you know you're looking the muscle you're looking at is gluteus minimus so medius here then the next one we find is piriformis now the one of the best ways to be sure that uh, you're looking at piriformis is that this structure should be emerging just distal to it and that's the sciatic nerve now on the specimens it may well actually be bigger than this it's a very large structure so it should be emerging just distal to piriformis here occasionally on the specimens it's difficult to find this line here this division between piriformis and gluteus medius so sometimes that will look like it's all one muscle mass so just be careful of that have a look for the sciatic nerve and remember that it should be emerging distal to piriformis now that means that um, under the sciatic nerve here we should have three muscles that we can hopefully fairly clearly identify and it goes gemella superior then obturator internus then gemellus inferior now some people say they're actually one muscle uh, and, and that they're all fused other people say no that's stupid they are three separate muscles so you can make up your own mind when you have a look at the specimens but on the specimens sometimes it is pretty difficult to tell the three of them apart often the obturator internus will just be a tendon here at this point and the and the muscle fibers you'll see above and below that tendon will be the gemellus superior and gemellus inferior okay so it can be a little tricky on some of the specimens to find those ones but if we turn we're, we're looking at a directly posterior point of view now if we turn to look at a more medial point of view here's the muscle belly of the obturator internus so there it is this is the the pubis here and here and then ischium here so under this muscle would be the obturator foramen so this muscle is um, taking up that internal aspect of the obturator foramen and then the tendon of that muscle goes around the bone around the ischium and does a 90 degree turn to then head out to the greater trochanter on the femur so often in here all you'll find is a tendon whereas here more medially or from a medial point of view you can see the muscle belly of obturator internus now on this model we can't see the obturator externus there, there would be a tendon just here between the gemellus inferior and the next muscle if we could dig down a couple of centimeters if we could dig in there we'd be able to find a tendon running out to the trochanter but on this model we can't and again the obturator externus the muscle belly would be on the outside of this muscle so it would be on around the obturator foramen but on the outside whereas this is on the internal surface so no obtur uh, obturator externus here but we can clearly see the last one of the lateral rotators the quadratus femoris so the ones we can see here gluteus medius piriformis gemellus superior obturator internus gemellus inferior and then quadratus femoris